Welcome to the Two Pages Project, part of the Coil Entertainment Network. I'm Rob Steele. If you would like to become a published author with us, stay tuned after the show for a vast majority of the details. But first, let's get to this week's story. And in this week's story, we follow a young man into the depths of the earth. Much against his will, if we're honest about it. In a story called The Shaft by Rob Steele. I'll tell you everything I know. I never did like the name. I mean, I know that's what it is and all. Dictionary says a shaft is a long, narrow hole that gives access to a mine. But that doesn't do this one justice. It's not just a long, narrow hole. It's dark. Not just dark, but soul-sucking dark. The kind of dark that scares you as a little kid. And this did scare me as a kid. I grew up here in Shafton, Kentucky. I'm told it's always been a mining town. Papa said the founders wanted to call it Shaft Town, but they were so poor they couldn't afford a W. And most of the people here worked in the mine. Most of the people I knew, anyway. Not the kids. I'm really glad we had laws against that. Because that shaft... I always felt like it was a living thing, just waiting to swallow people up. Sometimes it did. They'd call it a cave-in or a mining accident. I knew that didn't make any sense. Why did some people go in and never come back out again? No body or nothing. Randy Cartwright always teased me about it. I guess some would say bullying me. He would tell me stories about monsters that lived in the shaft. Some scared me more than others. He was older than me, about three years. His family was just as poor as mine. And when he was old enough, he went to work in the mines. His third day, there was one of those accidents. They said that Randy was caught in a blast meant to make the mine bigger, but it just made him smaller. Even the word mine is wrong. It's not mine. It's not even theirs. You know, the people who work in it. It Belongs to the Silvers family. Most of what's around here belongs to them. The McDonald's, the Kmart, the Piggly Wiggly. People around here work in the mine bring up tons of coal. None of it they get to keep. The Silvers pay them, and then the money gets spent at the local stores where it goes right back in the Silvers' pockets. That doesn't seem right, does it? It's not a mine. It's theirs. The Silvers. And it's not a shaft. It's a demon. That's why I was dreading my 16th birthday. People thought I was weird because they thought I liked school. I didn't like school that much. I liked that I got to go there instead of the shaft. Becky Danvers knew how I felt. I always thought she was lucky. They didn't let girls work in the mines. I envied her. I don't think I wanted to be a girl. I just wanted the opportunity not to work in the mine and have to travel down the shaft. But when my 16th came around, I accepted it as much like a man as I could. I didn't go to school. I got permission from the Silvers to work in their mine. They needed more coal, and I was of age. I was given three coal miners' outfits, a pair of gloves, and a helmet as a present. That's all they give you when you start the mines. If you needed more, you had to buy them. From the Silvers, of course. The pay? It's all an illusion. Everyone in the town knew that but no one could afford to move anywhere else. I guess it's like slavery. Just with money you get to hold for a very limited time. I guess there's very little in the way of whipping, so it's better in the short run. But working in the mine, with the blackness and the disease people get from working down there, black lung mostly, it's the long run that will kill you. 
my first day standing in line at the entrance to the shaft, I tried to be calm. I tried to be cool. But inside, I was scared to death. I guess it's showed since Mr. McTierney started teasing me. He was telling me that the shaft was just going to gobble me up. He said I had no business in the shaft. I was too young, too green, whatever that means. He said I should take the easy way out and go into the army. Maybe go off and fight in a war because only men go down in the shaft. And I was just a boy. A man I had never seen before stepped between us. He wasn't wearing a miner's outfit. He was wearing a suit and tie, and he was clean. No one else here had a clean suit. Even my suit had scuff marks on it already, and it was new, first time wearing it. He told McTierney to back off, and surprisingly, he did. Backed right down. After he gave McTierney a good dressing down, he left and the whistle to start the shift began. We all began to march into the shaft. Behind me, I heard someone say that I was lucky, and Mr. Silver's never does that. So that was Mr. Silver. I never met any of the Silvers before. I felt good for a moment. Maybe there was something about me that was special that the Silvers saw. Maybe I wouldn't work in the mines forever. Maybe there was a way out. Then I saw the door to the shaft. I'd never been this close before. I was too scared. There were double doors, and the right side was open to let us in. The left side was still closed. Someone painted on the door, Here in the cave, dark and deep, I can offer you eternal sleep. All of a sudden, I didn't feel so good anymore. I knew that something was going to go wrong. I just felt it. I started sweating. I mean sweating a lot. February be damned, and it was cold outside. But I mean, I was sweating more than ever before. I heard McTierney joke about me being white as a sheet, that maybe they could use me for light down there. As we passed the entrance, we went into the shaft. The temperature changed. It was dark, so I was expecting cold. Dark is is supposed to be cold, right? But it wasn't here. Hot air rushed up to greet me. That didn't help my sweating. I felt my gloves getting damp as the sweat ran down my arms. But that wasn't the worst of it. It wasn't completely dark. The lighting on the walls was barely illuminated. I can never get that word. It lit up the shaft. We kept stopping and I didn't know why. I didn't know a thing about mining. I'm supposed to learn on the job. It never occurred to me that there were different levels in the shaft. We kept stopping because there was an elevator. We were going deeper. And the edge of this rickety looking elevator had a draft that felt like the devil's breath. When my turn came, I got on the elevator with 15 other guys and down we went. There was some light coming up from below, you know, wherever we were going, but the light from above faded quickly. It got dark, that soul sucking dark. This time, despite the increase in heat, I felt cold sweats. Maybe they were cold before, I don't know. I just knew they were cold now. When we hit bottom, I heard McTierney shout everybody out. Since I was one of the first ones in, I was one of the last ones out. But I never made it out. Guy in front of me, I think it was Jason Baird, big fat guy, stepped right through the floor of the wooden elevator. One big creak and a snap and we both went through. I think there might have been a third guy, but I'm, I'm not sure. It felt like we fell forever. Maybe we did. It wasn't long before I lost sight of the big guy. I don't know if he hit a ledge or what. I knew that if I hit a ledge or a wall, I was done for. I had to be going pretty fast. 
I mean, there was plenty of wind in my face or, or my back or whatever. I was tumbling. I was also wondering how deep this shaft could possibly be. It couldn't be miles, could it? I mean, I was doubting kilometers. We learned those in school. It's so much easier than miles. Then I saw this light at the bottom, I guess. It was getting bigger, so it couldn't be that I was falling back up. I tried to stop tumbling and point myself at it. Then I thought, I should probably go feet first. So I flipped over. Part of me wasn't expecting to survive this trip through the shaft, but I wasn't scared. I'd been scared since I got the uniform this morning, but now I was calm. I don't know what came over me. I don't know if it was the light or what, but it felt good. The light was getting bigger or closer. I couldn't tell since I couldn't see the size of the shaft. Then it hit me, or I hit it, whatever. And I was on the lawn of the school. I don't know how I got there, but there I was. I was sitting on the playground, but, but it was different. The slide was all rusted. So were the swings and the seesaw. I, I stood and looked up to the school. It looked different, older. Then I passed out. I don't know what hit me, but I woke up in the hospital. It was fancier than I remembered it. I mean, out the window, it still looked like shafting, but brighter somehow. More electric signs, I guess. And there was this woman sitting by the edge of my bed. She said her name was Becky Colson but that I knew her as Becky Danvers. That didn't make any sense. I saw Becky just the day before. I didn't know who this woman was, but I suppose she looked like she could have been Becky's mom. She kept saying that she knew me from a long time ago, but that didn't make any sense either. I just l had this feeling I needed to get away. I took those sticky things off me and pulled my IV out and just left. Look, I, I know this sounds weird when you brought me in. I, I'd never seen a police car look like that. So, officer, please, that's all I know. Can you tell me what's going on? All I can tell you that I know is my name is Simon Bosco. I was born February 19th, 1960 in Shafton, Kentucky. And I'm, Becky said something about this being 2023 now. I don't know what's going on anymore. Can you please tell me? I mean, wh where's my mom and pop? I I just want to go home. If you'd like to have your story on the show, send it in to us. Check out the website, twopagesproject.com, for the rules, and we'll take your short story and publish it first as an ebook on the website, then turn it into an audiobook for the podcast. And when we've got enough stories, we'll turn it all into an actual book that you can buy at a store. You want proof of that? Check out twopagesofmystery.com, where we have already done that. See? I told you it's going to happen. All you have to do is submit a story to contact at twopagesproject.com. You can be part of the next book. And we'll be open to any type of story you want to send us. Not just horror, but sci-fi and mystery and fantasy, historical fiction, western, melodrama, whatever you want to write, we're good with it. Just submit your story for the audiobook treatment and publishing on our website. Just use the email address contact at twopagesproject.com. Also, don't forget to pass the show around because it's free and, um, yeah, it's fun, too. We'd like to thank iTunes, the Google Play Store, VillageConnectionRadio.com, and the Happy Hour Network for passing the show along. Also, don't forget to check out all the Coil Entertainment Network shows on Pinterest and YouTube, and the Coil Entertainment Network site, coil.us, C-O-Y-L. And while you're there, check out the Coil Entertainment Network store, where we've got t-shirts and hats that all go to support all the shows on the network. Please check that out. We will really appreciate it. And if you're interested in being part of the audiobook process, be it as a voice in the story, or if you have music that might go with a story, use that same email address, contact at twopagesproject.com. 
So until next week, be safe and keep writing.